Thank you. So Werner Vogel, the CTO of AWS, famously said, everything fails all the time. So for Werner Vogel, the question was not how to avoid failure, but the question was how to handle failure. So I am Dominic Torno. I'm a principal engineer at uh, Temporal, and I focus on uh, systems modeling, specifically um, formal modeling and uh, conceptual modeling. I work at uh, Temporal, and Temporal is an open source platform for um, durable executions. And durable execution is to a distributed system what a transaction is to a database an abstraction that enables you to build an application as if failure doesn't even exist. Now, to provide this guarantee, Temporal built a lot of expertise in failure handling. And today I'm super happy to be here at uh, for Asia Summit to talk about handling failures from first principle. So a first principle approach breaks a domain down in its basic principles, and then builds an understanding from these basic principles instead of relying on unspoken assumptions or on conventional wisdom. So in this presentation, we will think about uh, failure and failure tolerance holistically. A failure is an event in a system. Failure refers to an unwanted, but nevertheless possible event. Failure tolerance is a guarantee of a system. Failure tolerance refers to the guarantee that the system behaves in a well-defined manner, even in the presence of failure. Now, in other words, if a system is failure tolerant, then the system trivially guarantees total correctness in the absence of failure. But it also guarantees at least partial correctness in the presence of failure. And if the system is actually able to guarantee total correctness, even in the presence of failure, we speak of failure transparency. Now, failure transparency is obviously the most desirable property, but it's not always possible. So think, for example, of the CAP uh, conjecture. I think it's a database-heavy crowd. Think of the CAP conjecture. The CAP conjecture states that um, for a replicated data store, you have to choose between consistency and availability in the event of a network partition. So in the absence of a network partition, the network partition is a failure, the unwanted but nevertheless possible event, the system is able to guarantee total correctness. It is able to guarantee both consistency and availability. But in the presence of a network partition, the system is able to only guarantee partial correctness. We have to choose between consistency or availability. Yeah, but the good news is at least you get to choose. As a designer of your system, you get to choose what failure tolerance means to you. You get to choose the guarantee you uh, want and is important for you. You get to choose if you prefer consistency or availability. So failure tolerance is a design decision. Now, um, in order to talk about failure holistically, and what kinds of failures we expect, and what kinds of failures we need to tolerate, and what guarantees we need to make in the presence of a failure, uh, we need to first look at the underlying system model, where the failure actually plays out. So system model is a set of uh, assumptions about a system, yeah? and algorithms and protocols that are correct under one system model may not be correct under another system model. Yeah? Any deviation may render any algorithm or protocol um, incorrect. So you can think of a system model a bit as a, like a board game. Yeah? And the game sets the stage, and the game sets the rules. And as a player, you have to devise a strategy to achieve the game objective 
within the constraints that the game sets for you. And even a slight change to the rules uh, may render a player's strategy completely ineffective. And that happens a lot with extension packs. Now, for this presentation, we will think in terms of a very popular uh, system model in a cloud environment, in a microservice environment, and that is in terms of service orchestration. So a system is a collection of processes. And one process is a sequence of steps. And one step is a networked call to an upstream service. Here a single service call has transaction-like semantics. It's atomic. And it either happens completely or it doesn't happen at all. However, the sequential composition of service calls does not have transaction-like semantics. And the sequential composition is not atomic out of the box. But we also want the sequential composition, composition to be atomic. Yeah, we want total application, not partial application. So in the event of a failure, we need to ensure that the process executes in one of two ways, either observably equivalent to exactly once total application, or observably equivalent to not at all, no application. So the classic example is certainly travel booking. And many of us uh, traveled to be here. You know, so our credit cards were charged when we booked hotels and flights. Each step is in itself atomic. However, we also require the composition of the steps to be atomic. We expect exactly one charge, one room reservation, and one ticket. So to keep things simple for the rest of the presentation, whenever we need a concrete example, let's talk about uh, charging the credit card, the charge credit card service call. So. What failures do we need to tolerate? Yeah. What could go wrong? Well, it's a microservice environment. It's a networked call. So the request may be lost in the network. The service may crash before the computation takes effect, before the credit card charges. The service may crash after the computation takes effect, so after we charge the credit card. Or the response may be lost in the network. And in the absence of a response, we actually don't know if the intended effect happened or if it didn't happen. We cannot distinguish whether the failure occurred before the computation took effect or whether the failure occurred after the computation took effect. So we may end up in an inconsistent state. And additionally, the computation may simply return um, uh, a failure error, uh, um, uh, failure value, um, raise an exception, right? like an insufficient funds exception. Yeah? So there is a response, and the response itself indicates a failure. OK, now what are we going to do? Yeah? How are we going to handle that failure? Failure handling always consists of two components, failure detection and failure mitigation. The first component of failure handling is failure detection. So it refers to the mechanism that detects if a failure has occurred. Now, generally, I struggle a bit with the notion of failure detectors in distributed systems most authors focus on detecting component failures or emission failures, crashes. But I like to cast a bit of a wider net. So when I think about failure detection and failure detectors, I generally think about witnesses, yeah? a, a predicate that confirms the presence or the occurrence of a failure. Very common example for witnesses are exceptions. Right? The system itself tells me something went wrong. But also timeouts. We are waiting for something and it doesn't happen. That is also a pretty good indication that a failure has occurred. It is not certain, but it's a good indication. 
Now, the second component of failure handling, that is failure mitigation. It refers to the mechanism that actually addresses the suspected failure or resolves the suspected failure. And broadly speaking, especially for our scenario, there are two failure management uh, techniques. One is forward recovery and one is backward recovery. So remember the process is a sequence of steps and any partial uh, execution is undesirable. Therefore, in the event of a failure, we need to ensure that the process executes in one of two ways. So observably equivalent to successfully, total application, that is what forward recovery is responsible for, or observably equivalent to no application, that is what backward recovery is for. So let's look at forward recovery first. Yeah. In the case of a failure, we just move the process forward. So more formally, we transition the system from an intermediary state yeah, to the final state. And as a rule of thumb, we need to uh, repair the underlying failure because we try to push past it. We need to resolve that failure. Forward failure recovery is a very common platform level failure mitigation strategy. We simply retry, right? Something goes wrong, let's do this again. Something goes wrong, let's do this again. Sorry. Next, let's look at backward recovery. In case of a failure, we roll the process backward, yeah? or more formally, transition the system from the intermediary state back to its initial state. And as a rule of thumb, we don't have to repair the underlying failure. We're not trying to push past it. So backward recovery is a very common application level uh, failure mitigation strategy. We compensate, we undo what we already did. Uh, we reverse the charge on the credit card. In order to choose the ideal failure handling strategy, what are we going to do when a failure occurs? We also need to take the class of the failure into account. We need failure classification. Now, obviously, there are hundreds of different ways of um, classifying failure. But here, I want to focus on two orthogonal dimensions. That's the spatial dimension and the temporal dimension. On the spatial dimension, we can classify failure as an application level failure or a platform level failure. So in order to do so, we need to think about a system in layers. Components at a higher layer usually make calls, uh, down calls to components at a lower layer and generally they're expecting a response. And the end-to-end -end argument states that in a layered system, Failure handling should be implemented in the lowest layer possible, looking from upside down, that is able to correctly and completely handle failure detection, failure mitigation. So now a failure can be classified as either an application level failure or a platform level failure, depending on the lowest layer that is able to detect and mitigate the failure. So for instance, an insufficient funds uh, exception uh, indicates a application level failure. Now, the application level is the lowest layer uh, capable of correctly and completely resolving that failure. That failure is completely meaningless on an application level. But a could not connect uh, exception, uh, that failure indicates a platform level failure. Although the application itself could potentially mitigate that failure. The lowest layer that is capable of correctly and completely mitigating that failure is a platform layer, which can just simply be retry. We retry in the network. 
on the second dimension, on the temporal dimension, we can classify failure as transient, intermittent, and permanent. A failure is transient when we can uh, assume that the probability of a second failure after the first failure is not elevated. So, um, formally, a transient failure is defined by two characteristics. Yeah, so, first, the probability of a failure F2 occurring after a failure F1 already occurred is the uh, uh, same probability of F2 occurring just by its own. And transient failures are auto-repairing. They need to repair themselves. Otherwise, they are by definition not transient. So we do not need any intervention. Yeah. In our example, if the cause of the could not connect uh, exception is, um, for example, a router restart, then that is a transient failure. The uh, failure repairs quickly. Uh, once the router restarts, the connection can be made. The second class is an intermittent failure, where we can reasonably assume that the probability of a second failure is elevated. Yeah, so formally, an intermittent failure is defined uh, also by two characteristics. And firstly, the probability of a failure of two, F2 occurring after another failure F1 uh, already occurred is higher than the probability that F2 occurs on its own. And intermittent failures are also, by definition, order repairing and resolves themselves without any intervention. Yeah. In our example, if the cause of the failure is an outdated routing table, yeah, then the could not connect exception may be uh, an intermittent failure. And the type of failure auto repairs, but with some delay. Yeah. But as soon as the router updates its routing table, the connection can actually be made. And if a failure is permanent, we can reasonably assume that a second failure is certain. So formally, permanent failure is defined by two characteristics, where the probability of a failure F2 occurring after failure F1 occurred is 100%. Yeah. And secondly, also by definition, permanent failures require manual intervention. They require manual repair. In our example, in the case of the failure is an expired certificate, then the could not uh, connect exception is a permanent failure. Yeah, that failure doesn't auto repair. Somebody has to come and install a new certificate, otherwise it doesn't go away. Now, with all of this together, you know, with the, for this particular system model and for that particular failure model, what could an ideal failure handling strategy look like? Right? And uh, also, what is ideal? What is ideal for me may not be ideal for you. It's a design decision. Right? But uh, let's look at one that I think is a reasonable failure handling strategy. So in the event of a failure, first, let's assume it's a transient platform level failure. So we retry immediately. Right? Let's not wait. Immediately retry. If the retry succeeds, we successfully mitigated the failure. Done. If the immediate retry does not succeed, we just need to upgrade our understanding of the failure. Yeah, now let's just assume that the failure is an intermittent, yet it's still platform level. It's order repairing. So we just retry a bounded number of times, and typically we do that with um, exponential backoff. Yeah, again, if one of the retries succeeds, Done. Successfully mitigate the failure. If none of the retries succeeds, we once again upgrade our understanding of the failure. Yeah? We can still assume that the failure is a platform level failure, but now we need to assume that it is permanent. So the process basically suspends and is awaiting the repair of the underlying failure. We need manual intervention. If that does the trick, once again, we mitigated the failure. If nobody repairs the failure in time and manual intervention doesn't happen, we need to upgrade our understanding of the failure once again. And uh, we now um, assume it's an application level failure and we are ready to compensate. We are rolling back whatever already happened. And if the compensation is successful, we successfully mitigated the failure. If the compensation is not successful, we're in the worst 
um, place to be, and then we basically have to escalate to a human operator. If we charge the credit card, but we cannot roll back the charge on the credit card, we cannot undo the charge, somebody has to sit down, write a check, and mail the check. Or however, we're going to resolve it, but we have to resolve it outside of the system on a level of a human operator. Now, as a conclusion, yeah, failure and failure handling and guaranteeing failure tolerance and working on failure transparency can be super intimidating topic. But it helps me a lot to take a principled approach, yeah, to, um, to think about failure uh, holistically and then uh, implement the failure handlers handling strategy with confidence. Now, if you want to get a head start, then check out Temporal.io. Temporal takes a principled approach to failure handling and implements the concepts that uh, we have explored today on a platform level, guiding you towards an ideal failure handling strategy for uh, your distributed systems. And with that, thank you very much um, for joining. Super happy to answer any questions uh, you may have in uh, person or feel uh, free to reach out to me uh, also uh, online, for example, on Twitter at uh, Dominic Torno. And then, uh, yeah, thanks again. Thanks again for being here. Uh, yeah, the, so Temporal is an uh, open source project and it is a platform for durable executions. Now, I like to contrast also durable executions to volatile executions. Volatile executions are just simple function executions. And think of any simple function. It only provides you weak execution guarantees. Yeah? The function may crash uh, or the function may time out. Right? And that may lead to a partial application. Now, Temporal gives you uh, durable executions. And durable executions are function executions with strong execution guarantees. Yeah. The function execution cannot fail, and the function execution cannot time out. And uh, yeah, it's an, open, it's an open source project. And uh, check it out at uh, temporal.io. Yeah, it cannot. Yeah, yes, correct. So uh, you are correct. Uh, it cannot. It cannot know. It is an impossibility result in distributed systems that uh, it's either complete or perfect. And uh, what usually what uh, systems the the I mean, in this case, um, the approach that we take is uh, we suspect a failure even if the um, upstream component is just slow. And uh, therefore, any stragglers, any delay responses uh, will be omitted, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, will be discarded. But uh, you are entirely correct. You have to deal with the fact that uh, the computation uh, of that request um, actually happened. So your system must be able to either roll forward or roll backward whether the computation took effect or didn't take effect which is actually not, it's not easy to do, right? A, it's, not e it's basically impossible to do on a platform level unless you know the semantics of the operations like a database does, right? I know what a write does, so I can undo a write generically, but for like any service call, I don't know what, like, what is the undo operation of a, of a credit card charge. We don't know that on a, on a platform level, right? So it requires the cooperation of the, of the application programmer, and that's actually quite a feat, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's quite a challenge. Yeah, um, so 
the there is um, so on the on the system model right that temporal takes into account there are certain failures that we can handle on a platform level and these are trans failures and intermittent failures right so failures uh, that can be uh, resolved by a uh, retry and by forward recovery we can handle that completely on a platform level and do not require the um, the operation of the developer although since we are retrying, we do require item potence on the on the uh, upward service calls. But um, as soon as we talk about application level failures, like the insufficient funds exception, right? There is uh, there is no way that we can push through that on a platform level. So at that moment, we escalate to the application level, and this these are the exceptions that you have to take uh, into account in your code. So the compensation is can still be found in the code. Um, often, often called sagas, right? So the compensation can still uh, can still be found in the code, but uh, on a platform level, we can take care of intermittent and transient failures, or transient and intermittent failures. We can also um, we can help you deal with permanent failures by not abandoning the function execution. Usually, a function execution when a function execution ex uh, uh, like encounters an exception, it just poof goes away, right? And then, if in doubt, you don't even know that it happened and it just went away. So the uh, temporal uh, durable executions, they do not go away. They suspend at the failure point. It just sits there and wait, right? So I can go in uh, if I'm still within the timeout of the overall durable execution. Some of our durable executions run hours, days, um, weeks, months. We have actual users that use them in, in the course of years, so they service uh, 30 year long uh, loans, one durable execution. That suspends on the failure point, and then you come in, you fix it, and then it just resumes as if the failure never happened. It's transparent to your code. It's actually pretty slick. Uh, if. Um, uh, I was just about to. Um, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Yeah, please. Uh, thank you again. Thank you very much for being here. And then please come find me. We can we can talk uh, downstairs in the hangout area. And I also have temporal stickers if anybody wants a sticker. Thank you.